Welcome to the online presentation of the Fresno Council of Governments Sustainable Community Strategy, or SCS, scenarios. During this presentation, we are going to tell you a little about the Fresno Council of Governments, who we are and what we do. Then we will explain what a sustainable community strategy is, present the three scenarios that have recently been released for public review, and ask you to select the scenario that you prefer. This is a summary of the SCS timeline for participation. The three SCS scenarios were released on August 14, 2013 to our Regional Transportation Plan Roundtable Committee. During August and September, we are hosting community workshops to solicit public opinion on the scenarios. All of the voting results and additional public comments for the three scenarios will then be presented to the Fresno COG Policy Board at their September 26th meeting, where they will be selecting the preferred SCS scenario that becomes a part of the 2014 Regional Transportation Plan. The draft Regional Transportation Plan is scheduled to be released for a 55-day public review and comment period on November 25th. The final plan is scheduled to be adopted by March 31st, 2014. Fresno COG was formed in 1967 and is an association of local governments made up of the County of Fresno and the 15 cities within it. They make up our membership. We are one of 38 such agencies in California and 500 plus nationwide. Fresno COG's funding comes from local, state, and federal funding sources. Local funds include proceeds from Measure C, a local sales tax we pay in Fresno County for transportation purposes. Our board consists of the mayors of each of the 15 incorporated cities in Fresno County and the chair of the County Board of Supervisors. Quickly summarized, Fresno COG works to provide regional transportation planning for the Fresno County region. We develop plans for transportation-related activities that look 5 to 25 years into the future. Fresno COG also receives funds from state and federal sources and disperses them to our member agencies. We also manage transportation planning grant funds and competitive funds for reducing air pollutants. Fresno COG uses a computer traffic forecasting model that includes all the transportation projects available in Fresno County now and in the future. It tests how and where all the traffic will go and how we will be able to get around in the future. Fresno COG also administrates programs such as the Measure C Carpool Incentive Program, the Measure C Commuter and Farm Worker Vanpool Programs, and the Senior Taxi Script Program. The Freeway Service Patrol is run in partnership with Fresno COG, Caltrans, and the Highway Patrol to make sure our freeways operate safely and efficiently during morning and evening commute hours. They provide free towing services for cars that break down or are involved in accidents on State Routes 99, 41, 168, and 180. We also print free maps that show all the bikeways available in Fresno, Clovis, and Kingsburg. These maps are available at bike shops and sports stores, as well as visitor centers throughout the county. Fresno COG is required to include a sustainable community strategy in the 2014 Regional Transportation Plan, or RTP, a long-range plan that looks 20-plus years into the future transportation needs in the Fresno County region. An SES is a forecast land use pattern combined with a transportation network that, if implemented, will reduce greenhouse gas emissions and provide other benefits such as better air quality, healthier environment, farmland conservation, etc. Many of you might have known that greenhouse gas is mostly generated by burning fossil fuels for heating, electricity, and transportation. Greenhouse gas traps heat in the air and makes the planet warmer. The transportation sector alone produces 38% of the greenhouse gas emission in California. The goal of the SES is to reduce traveling through integrated transportation and land use planning, thus reducing greenhouse gas emission. During the last 12 months, Fresno COG, with the guidance of the RTP Roundtable Committee, has developed three scenarios of combined land use and transportation to see the impacts of some what-if conditions. The first scenario, Scenario A, was developed based on the input collected at the November 2012 public workshop at Bullard High School. In this scenario, some small cities and communities receive significantly more growth than what the historical trend has shown. However, the growth ratio between the metro area and the non-metro areas have been constrained to reflect more accurately the historical trend. Scenario B was developed according to the latest planning assumptions from Fresno COG's member agencies. It was based on the existing general plans, the latest general plan updates, or proposed land uses. 
In this scenario, development in the foothills, such as Milliton Newtown, Bryant Ranch, and the proposed pharmacy school is included. In Scenario C, an additional 4% of countywide growth was allocated to the City of Fresno, chiefly along major corridors and activity centers. Also, growth for the unincorporated county areas was only allocated to the following 10 existing unincorporated communities, Biola, Carruthers, Del Rey, Easton, Fryant, Lanier, Layton, Riverdale, Shaver Lake, and Tranquility. Scenario C does not include the foothill development areas of Millerton Newtown, Fryant Ranch, and the proposed pharmacy school. On the transportation side, we went through a committee process and came up with a financially constrained project list that funds all the projects submitted by the cities and the county. In this list, 30% of the total funding will go to transit projects, 2% to bike and pedestrian projects, 25% to road operation and maintenance projects, and 43% to capacity increasing road projects. Next, you will see some growth maps for these scenarios. But first, a little background on what you will see on these maps. The maps will show the growth distribution of housing and employment from 2008 to 2035. The purpose of creating different growth distribution scenarios is to compare the impacts of these scenarios. Thus, each of the three scenarios reflect the same amount of population and employment growth for Fresno County. To get a better idea of the progress made in each of the three SCS scenarios, we included a status quo or business as usual scenario in our presentation. This scenario reflects how growth is likely to occur if things happen the way they have in the past with no active efforts to change or improve. The yellow and orange colors represent housing growth from 2008 to 2035, with yellow representing low density development. As the colors get more orange or red, the density increases. This is the status quo growth allocation map. The status quo scenario is based on the existing general and specific plans. This is scenario A. Again, scenario A was developed based on the inputs collected in a public workshop. In this scenario, a few communities, such as Huron, Kerman, Riverdale, and Lanier, receive significantly more growth than the historical trend. Milliton Newtown and Fryant Ranch are partially developed in this scenario, and the proposed pharmacy school is not included. Scenario B includes the latest general plan updates from City of Fresno and the City of Clovis. Compared to the status quo scenario, there is no scattered rural growth in the unincorporated county area that does not belong to any communities. Milliton Newtown, Fryant Ranch, and the proposed pharmacy school are all included in Scenario B. This is Scenario C. As directed by the Roundtable Committee, an additional 4% of countywide growth is allocated to the City of Fresno, largely along the corridors and activity centers. All of the unincorporated county growth is restricted to 10 existing unincorporated communities. In this scenario, no growth is allocated to Millerton Newtown, Fryant Ranch, or the proposed pharmacy school. This is the employment growth allocation map for the status quo scenario. Lighter blue represents a low job growth intensity, and darker blue represents higher employment growth intensity. This is the employment growth allocation map for Scenario A. This is the employment growth allocation map for Scenario B. This is the employment growth allocation map for Scenario C. Before exploring the technical analysis of the scenarios, let's talk about performance indicators. In the SCS process, performance indicators are used to assess the impacts of different planning scenarios. They provide quantified evidence of the consequence of a decision or set of actions. We have come up with 10 indicators that are considered the highest priority measurements of the scenario's relative performance. Greenhouse gas emission reduction. The state has set greenhouse gas emission targets for the Fresno County region, that is, 5% per capita reduction by 2020 and 10% by 2035, compared against the 2005 level. This chart shows you whether the scenarios will meet these state targets, and if they do, which scenario performs better. The blue bars represent 2020 numbers, red bars represent 2035 numbers, and the green bars 2040. Scenarios A, B, and C are all able to meet these targets. Among the three scenarios, 
Scenario C can achieve the highest greenhouse gas reduction. As you can see, all three scenarios have much higher reductions than the status quo scenario. Housing. This indicator looks at the new housing developed from 2008 to 2035 and breaks it down by percentage into single-family homes, townhomes, and multifamily housing. Compared to status quo, each of the three scenarios increase significantly in the amount of multifamily housing, as well as decrease in single-family development. Residential density. This indicator shows the average housing units per acre for brand new housing. All three scenarios have much higher density than the status quo scenario. As you can see, scenario C has the highest average density for new residential development. Compact development. This indicator shows the average number of people for every acre of developed land. All three scenarios are much more compact than the status quo scenario, with scenario A being the most compact. Transit-oriented development. This indicator measures the amount of new growth from 2008 to 2035 being allocated within a half mile of the bus rapid transit or BRT system. The more growth allocated near the BRT system, the more people will likely take the BRT. Land consumption. This indicator looks at the total acres of land that will be consumed due to new growth from 2008 to 2035. The numbers shown on this chart are in 1,000 acres. Again, all three scenarios are doing much better than the status quo, with Scenario A consuming the least amount of land. Important farmland consumed. We all know agriculture is vital to Fresno's economy. This indicator looks at the amount of important farmland that will be converted into development due to the new growth from 2008 to 2035. Important farmland in this case refers to unique farmland, prime farmland, or farmland of statewide importance. Scenario C consumes the least amount of important farmland, but all three scenarios are doing far better compared to the status quo scenario. Vehicle Miles Traveled, or VMT. This indicator shows the total number of miles traveled by the entire population in Fresno County for a typical day in 2035. As the goal of the SCS is to reduce travel-related greenhouse gas emissions, a higher VMT value generally means higher greenhouse gas emissions. Criteria Pollutants Emission. These pollutants, carbon monoxide, reactive organic gases, nitrogen oxide, PM2.5, and PM10, are designated as criteria pollutants by the Federal Clean Air Act and are harmful to the human body. Their emissions are measured in tons per day for a typical day in 2035. Generally, such pollutant emissions is related to the vehicle miles traveled, which was shown on the previous slide. Active transportation and transit travel. This indicator looks at the number of transit, bike, and pedestrian trips that each scenario will generate for a typical day in 2035. More people taking transit or choosing to walk or bike means more people not driving their own cars, leading to less vehicle miles traveled and less pollutant emission. Here is a chart showing how these 10 indicators are related to some of the issues that may concern you. If air quality and health are priorities for you, then you should look at the indicators for criteria pollutants, transit-oriented development, vehicle miles traveled, greenhouse gas emission reduction, compact development, residential density, housing types, and active transportation and transit travel. If transportation choice is most important to you, then you should look at transit-oriented development, compact development, residential density, housing types, and active transportation and transit travel. If housing options are critical to you, then you should focus on transit-oriented development, compact development, residential density, and housing types. If farmland and resource conservation are important to you, then transit-oriented development, land consumption, compact development, residential density, important farmland, and housing types are the indicators that you should consider. Now that you have viewed this presentation, we are going to ask you to select the scenario that you prefer based on the information that we have provided. If you have additional comments and suggestions on the scenarios, please enter that information in the survey after you select your preferred scenario. Please go to www.fresnocog.org and click on the homepage link to the SCS page. Then click through the survey or voting link or view the maps and charts once again that are posted on the SCS page.
Thank you for taking time to give us your feedback. Your input will be presented to the Fresno-COG Policy Board at their September 26th board meeting.